One of the things that can make me appreciate a story in any piece of fiction are the characters. Even if the story can feel off in some places, a great cast of characters, or even a particular one, can potentially save a story for me. A character can even attract people to a piece of entertainment with just how cool, cute, sexy, or grotesque the character designs are. In this video, I want to talk about one of my recent favourite characters, Jill Stingray from Valhalla, and why she is amazing. If you haven't played Valhalla yet, then I highly recommend it, especially if you want a chill, reaction game with an amazing three-dimensional cast. Go grab yourself a beverage and a snack and enjoy the video. Valhalla is a cyberpunk bartender action game. Well, it's more of a visual novel, with a light dose of bartender simulation, with the aesthetics being inspired by old PC-98 games, as well as animes like Ghost in a Cell and Bubblegum Crisis. In the game, you play as Jill, who mixes and serves drinks to plenty of colourful individuals in a cyberpunk city. Cyberpunk is quite a popular science fiction subgenre that is set in a dystopian future where technology is advanced with artificial intelligence but is run down with poverty and a drastic difference between social classes as greedy corporations are at the top. Cyberpunk is usually a good way to tell stories about real world issues like political philosophy, drug culture, identity disorder and street violence without directly mentioning any current news of the real world. The game is set in a fictional place called Jet City, a tax haven where corporations and criminal empires reign supreme, and your enforcers known as the White Knights make sure the corrupt with yours are obeyed. Like many of its genre, it's a sithole, with the average person studying to stay afloat. The fictional area that is Jet City mirrors many third world countries, specifically the country of Venezuela, where the economy has been struggling for years as inflation keeps increasing along with a corrupted government and the conflicts between the government and its people. If you want to know more about the connections between Valhalla and Venezuela, then I recommend you check out this video by Henry Kaufman afterwards. The developers use certain elements in their game like the White Knight corruption, the act of essentials in the open amendments, as well as the new sites from their experience given in Venezuela at the time. A lot of games yet you play as a hero who goes on grand adventures that consists of saving princesses or saving the world from darkness. And sometimes they impact the world around them for the better. In some cases the protagonist is a chosen hero or has a special power that the story revolves around them. In Jill's case however, she is just an average person who has little to no control on what happens in her awful world, nor does the player, as the writer and programmer Fernando Damas wanted to try to make the player feel small. The game's story is around the Christmas holidays, which while it's a season I personally love, is heavy to mercy eyes and is also one of the most depressing times for many. It's even got a name which is Seasonal Affective Disorder. It's also known as the holiday abuse, which are feelings of anxiety and depression that normally triggers around the festive season. According to the National Alliance on Mental Illness, NAMI for sort, 64% now are affected by the holiday abuse and 24% said the holidays affect them a lot. These can be caused by unrealistic expectations, emotional memories, finances or a sense of loneliness. In Jill's case, it's got to do with her ex who passed away recently, the fights he had with her ex's sister Gabby and her regrets of a breakup three years ago. Some of the characters can connect to the holiday abuse, your armor, who has family problems, specifically with her older sister. I am not sure setting the game around Christmas was intentional, but if it was, it was a genius move. Still, despite how bad the world is, the game does not dwell too much on negativity as the lore is only told to you second hand through social media and Jill's interactions with the, her customers that experienced it themselves. While it may sound awful to us, to the characters it's just part of their everyday lives. There's one point in the game where a yard's bang happens outside of the bar and the task does have a casual conversation or what the sound was like it was a normal Tuesday. The interactions don't always yeet a human doom as the cast talked about more light-hearted stuff 
like Reyes and Sips, music, childhoods and plenty more. A bunch of characters even make jokes every now and then, especially Jill who makes childish inappropriate jokes in her head and Dorothy mercy comes into the bar with a smile on her face. Stella still loves hosting Christmas parties and buying this for the less fortunate children. The designer Christopher Ortez mentions in a Kill Screen interview that a really depressing society where everyone's always sad and worried about the future in a country with no hope of recovery. So we came up with a set of characters who, in the middle of this disaster, try to go on with their lives and be as happy as they can with what they have. While I don't live in a third world country or live in a place that gets city, plenty of bad things happen throughout the globe, especially within the last few years, but plenty of us still try to be as positive and appreciate the small things in life. Although Jill herself doesn't impact the world, she does affect the majority of people around her. Bartenders in Fitzin are occasionally known to offer support to the main character by giving them drinks while listening to their problems and confessions, giving them advice and helping them out with just an ear and a few drinks without judging them. Sometimes. Think of characters like Nelson from the TV series Life on Mars, Thomas and Erica from the video game Catherine, or to a lesser extent, Mo from The Simpsons. Bartenders usually have no connections to the other characters in the story, making them a great way to confess the central protagonist's problems. They are kind of like priests in confessional booths or amateur psychologists. In Valhalla, you basically play as the bartender confidant character, listening to others' problems and also just listening to them, talking about their daily lives, giving them support one way or another. While there are no diode bots options, Jill can change the course of events by giving them certain drinks or giving them a certain amount. Sometimes the bartender is just there to introduce multiple characters to each other and is normally in the background afterwards. You see this when Jill introduces Dorothy to Jamie who are two different kinds of people but do bond for a bit. Alcohol tends to make more people sociable and more open to their feelings and while it is never a good idea to overdrink, especially in bars where you don't know anyone, the media usually portrays bars, especially smaller ones, as a relaxing place like Catherine and Valhalla. Superbond Games even encourages the player to bring a beverage or a snack to have a nice chill out time playing through their game. Sometimes I do enjoy a bit of a drink while playing certain games in the evening. It just feels so relaxing and Valhalla is certainly one of those names to experience it. Jill often uses the phrase before she starts to sift, time to mix drinks and change lives, which started out as a line from the corporates who ran the bar while she was training, but it became something that just stuck with her. The quote became something vital to how Jill approaches the customers as well as the player. Three examples that come to mind are Say, Stella and Kim. Let's start with Say and Stella since both are kind of an item. Say was a member of the White Knights, but during the middle of the game, the White Knights were disbanded during a hostage situation. During the hostage situation, Stella begins to worry about whether or not her best friend will survive, as well as feeling powerless to do anything. Jill faintly is there to be in Stella's most troublesome time and helps her get through it. Say only managed to get out of the cat with the bear of her skin. She was badly injured and after being treated by the ambience, she immediately went to the bar since Jill was her closest friend at the time. Jill worried about Say and offered a medicine of support by being there for her and a couple of days later, Say became Say's official bodyguard, thanks to the help Jill gave to both characters. Next is Kim. In the beginning of the game, Jill's boss Dana finds her outside unconscious and brings her to the bar for safety. When she wakes up, she is scared to death, worrying that the people in the bar would do cool things to her. Now Jill confronts Kim by offering her a drink and yet an event. Jill even advises her to go to the nearest convenience store to get a drug test for drinks when Kim is being paranoid. Later on, Kim comes back and thanks the staff for helping her out. She vents out that she hates her job as a journalist and her boss Donovan, who appears as the first customer in the game. With the help of Jill giving her advice, Kim quits her miserable job and recreates her life choices, 
making her a more happy and healthier person. She even starts bartender training after the dame closes, similar to why Jill became a bartender in the first place. Jill is kind of the video game equivalent to Mo from The Simpsons, who while is the confidant character, transforms into a close friend to a few of the cast, especially with Arma and Dorothy, who later on in the game offer their support when she breaks down and shows that Jill is just a normal person. While the setting is fictional with outlandish characters, Jill is just a simple adult with a job that has to pay her bills just like any adult, which people around my age could possibly relate to, especially ones who work in retail, where you have to interact with a wide range of individuals that you may or may not like interacting with. In the game, stuff like buying items between breaks helps Jill's mood and work effort, which while money doesn't buy happiness, we've all had small things change our mood and it shows in the game. If Jill doesn't have a particular item at the time, she is unable to concentrate on her work, making it difficult to serve the right drinks. What makes Jill special is that she is just an average person who is still at the point of her life where she doesn't know where to go and is something I can relate to myself being around the same age group as her. Three years prior to the game, Jill was in a relationship with a girl named Yanor, and they were very close. They met when Jill was in college and Yanor was the one that motivated Jill in her studies. After Jill graduated, she did offer to work in a bid research facility with the help of her girlfriend, who put in a good word. However, she experienced a midlife crisis, not knowing what to do with her life. Jill wasn't sure what she wanted in her future and refused to offer that she might end up being miserable later on in life if she took that offer. The relationship took a nosedive as the former couple had a huge fight, even Jill storming off. After the fight, she decided to go into bartending, which was partially inspired by Yanor during a night out years ago. She took the job to take time and think about her future. Even after finishing the higher education, a lot of people still struggle with what they want to do in life. I've been down a somewhat similar path to Jill not knowing what I wanted to do in my life despite being an adult and honestly that is perfectly fine. We all grow up at our own speed. No need to settle down once you graduate from university or college. Yanor's younger sister Gabby enters the bar one night to tell Jill that Yanor died recently from nanomachine rejection which causes Jill to break down as their final moments together were on bad terms despite their love for one another. Playing this part of the game really hit me and made me feel sorry for both characters. It must have been difficult having your last moments with a loved one being an argument. You would always want your final moments with someone you cared about to be a happy moment. I'm not sure if this was intentional, but you know was a name used in two of Edgar Allan Poe's poems, The Raven and You Know. TV tropes tour near the last You Know where their love interest is this primed me to have a significant impact on the story. Both poems feature the character named Yanor, who is a dead love one, described as an angel by the titular character of the poems. The Raven describes the main character being depressed and emotionally tortured for the loss of his loved one, wishing he would meet her again. After hearing the news from Gabby, we do see Jill being emotionally depressed, yachting to do anything, causing her to struggle with her job for a few days. The poem you know is about the loss of the main character's wife, however instead of mourning the loss of his wife, instead chooses to honour her life and celebrate her entering the realm of heaven, which at the end of Valhalla sees both Jill and Gabby giving a toast to you know on New Year's Eve. The game ending on the New Year's party is clearer, since New Year's is known to be the day of resolutions, which could see the growth of both Jill and Gabby. Over the years, I've been attached to more grounded stories about personal conflicts, as I feel it's easy to connect to those characters, as you may have experienced something similar, like the job you work at, figuring out what to do in your future, even in a harsh environment, or even regrets. Jill has become one of my favourite characters due to these reasons. Superbond games have done a fantastic job making some of the most three-dimensional and diverse characters, and I'm looking forward to the next game. Cheers, Superbond games.